parents were saying that we might need to be evacuated. At about 4 a.m., my dad started running through the house, just yelling that we had got the call, we needed to get up, and we needed to pack up and leave. And I opened my eyes and it was super smoky in the house. The ridge wasn't glowing anymore, it was just on fire. And we got down to Highway 48 and the flames, I don't have any idea how tall they were, but they were they were beyond words, they were so, so tall. And embers, you know, this big, were falling down in front of us, in front of our car, like we're trying to like dodge the embers. Probably like a week and a half we were out of our house, something like that. <laughs> It seemed like forever, just waiting, just waiting and waiting and trying to not think about it to the point where it drove us crazy. I'm very grateful for my experience going through that. I'm very grateful that we we didn't lose our home and uh, it's nothing I ever want to go through again. My name is Harlan Vincent, and I am a retired fire chief from the village of Verdoso. I remember sitting in my office and getting a phone call from the Forest Service, and the Forest Service ranger had called and told me that there was a fire on the wilderness. That day was kind of vivid because we had the 60 and 80 mile an hour winds. Within three hours, I get another phone call and things are starting to get pretty serious. The ranger that we had at that time, he did everything he could to get a handle on that fire. And then as the wind started to really, really rip, that fire started to move and it finally got into forest. And then it started moving down into some of our subdivisions in the county. It was not into the village at that time. By the time it got to the structures, it was just devastating. It just ripped right through them. And I mean, they were burnt down within six minutes. In the Little Bear Fire, and I can't, I can't really be specific, but over 200 structures, over 24,000 acres, just straight devastation. And when you see something moving through Lincoln County, it doesn't matter where it's at, it's in Lincoln County, whether it's Ridoso, Ridoso Downs, Hondo, it doesn't matter what you're doing. It's just devastating to watch people lose all their stuff and how fast houses go up. You really can't do anything about it. You can protect what you can protect, but a wind-driven fire like that, you cannot get in front of it because you lose your life. When people are impacted that way, their mind is so scrambled because they don't know where to start. And uh, one of the things that we did at our fire department whenever I was the fire chief is we had a document called After the Fire, a one through 10 rundown on how to follow and get money and how to get clothes and how to get with your insurance and who to call and how to get a driver's license because you know, depending on when the fire impacts you, you might not get out with anything. We hand that out to everybody and then we would put somebody with that person for three days just to assist and help them in everything that they, that they did and they could get all their stuff back. I worked on this for years. We can always do our due diligence in thinning. We can always do our due diligence in making sure that it, we call it having your house hardened, stucco, making sure everything's raked up around it, all the pine needles are off the top. Make sure your thinning's right and you have trees away from your structure. And a lot of people like to move to the mountains because they love the trees and everybody loves the trees. But once things go bad and they catch on fire, you know, it's, it, they run, it runs in the trees and the, the radiant heat off of those trees that's what gets the structures. It's just so hot. The other thing that I think we could do is um, 
you know, and I know the Forest Service, they, they work really hard on trying to do as much thinning as they can, but we do have organizations that do not like to cut trees. They think it's a bad thing to cut trees and they're just, I feel like they could be educated in a, in a different way. I'm not saying that they're not educated, I'm just saying they could be educated in a different way. We're not taking all the trees, we're just taking some. And we have to thin this stuff out where we can get ahead of these fires. I pray daily for the people that were just impacted by the recent fire that we had. And there was another couple of hundred structures that were taken. A lot of my friends lost a lot of things. Some of the firefighters lost property. They lost things that they work with, equipment. It is a major setback but that stuff will get replaced. It just sets them back. But I went, I drove down Gavilan Canyon the other day and all the people were out there that owned property just diligently working and trying to get their stuff cleaned up so they can get back to normal. And um, my thoughts and prayers are always with the people that lose stuff like that. And we just have to be uh, again, diligent in making sure that we turn in smokes. If you see smoke, if the wind's blowing really, really bad. I, I heard something the other day that made a lot of sense. Either we as a community start putting power lines underground and it's gonna be very expensive or the recommend, recommendation was made that when the wind's over 65 miles an hour, that we turn the power off and people need to have generated power in order to, you know, have lights and keep their refrigerators and freezers and everything like that on. So I thought that was a great idea. People are trying to be proactive. So I thought it was a good idea.